Hey everybody, it's Craig back to here, and in this video, we're going to have a quick look at the brand new Atmos Ninja 5. Now, I had a first look at this at Photo Plus in New York in October. I got home and I decided it was right for my workflow. So in this video, we're going to do a quick unboxing. We're going to go over the key features, and I want to talk to you about something that no one else is talking about when it comes to the Atmos Ninja 5. Stick around for the end. I'll save that for that part. All right, let's get started. The Ninja 5 can record up to 4K 60p 10-bit 422 in Apple ProRes or Avid DN XHR on supported cameras. Check to see if your camera is supported. Now the screen is 1920 by 1080p and it's a 1000 nit brightness screen. It also comes with the Master Caddy and an AC adapter with different power receptacles depending on where you are in the world. Now there's the front, there's the back of the unit where you put the AC adapter and the Master Caddy. And then at the bottom, there's a screw thread right there. And on the top, there's a vent for the fan and also a screw thread. Now on the side, you'll see there's a full HDMI in and a full HDMI out. And on the other side, it's the power mic headphone jack and the remote jack. Now there's another look at the AC adapter. Now what you want to do is slide that onto the two protruding pieces at the bottom. You can see the holes on the AC adapter match the ones on the battery. So you just slide that into place. Make sure you've got that lined up properly and then it just slides easily into place. Now there's the master caddy port. Now what you'll need is an SSD drive and you have to insert that into the master caddy which is two plastic pieces with four screws so make sure that you line up that piece there with the threads with the opening in the master caddy and then you put in your screws once everything's lined up and then just take some care when you go to insert that to make sure that you have that lined up properly and then it just easily slides into place but you can see it sort of protrudes a little bit if you want one that fits perfectly, you can get the Angelbird hard drives. Now, there is the battery. It's the NPF battery. They come in three different sizes, and they're made by a number of different manufacturers. That's the smallest one you can get right there. Now, this is the docking station. You'll need this to get the information off of the hard drive. All right, in this part of the video, we're going to go over the user interface. So we're looking at the Ninja 5. You can see there's nothing on the screen. It's a touch monitor. So as I touch it, you can see we have a menu at the bottom and a menu at the top. So let's first go through the menu at the top. Now, if I touch up here, you can see that it brings up a menu with our input, our output, our record, file, meters, and audio. So let's go through that. So if you were shooting in log format, say, you would just turn this switch on here and you can see it's set for Panasonic V-Log V-Gamut. If I touch that, you can see we have RE, we have JVC. So you can go through all your log formats right there. So that would be your input settings. Now we also have output settings. So if you wanted to output this to another HDMI monitor, so maybe a larger screen for more people to see, you can use the HDMI out and set your output. Now we have our recording. You have ProRes set up right here, HQ compression. And then if you touch that, you can see we have ProRes Lite, ProRes 422, HQ. So you can just change your format that way. Now we have our file, so you can name your file. We also have audio meters that you can see right there. And you can adjust the levels of your meter. Now there's also an interesting function too, is there's a delay if you're recording audio from your camera to this and you can adjust the audio delay. I'll show you that in a second. Now here's the delay right here. I've set it for three frames. So you might want to experiment with that. So if you encounter that issue where you're running a mic through your camera or whether you're running a mic directly through this, if you see a delay in the audio to when you're talking, you have to make sure that you set this audio delay. Now I'm recording my audio externally to a Zoom recorder, so I'm not so concerned about that. But if you're recording directly this, that was your only source, that's something that you want to pay attention to. So let's just get out of this monitor right here or the setup. I'll click here and you can see we have the monitor settings down here. I just want to show you something else too. Now we can also click on this and you can see format. So every time you bring your SSD drive in, you can reformat that hard drive. Also, we can see other things here like our battery power. If we're using battery, we can set our date and time. We have time code. And like I said, with the media button, you can format your hard drive. All right, let's get out of here and we'll look at some of the menus at the bottom. So you can see here we have record, play, monitor, and edit. Now we'll go left to right. Here is our waveform monitor. You can see it on the left. If I click that, it gets bigger. If I click it again, it gets even bigger. 
So this will allow us to set a really accurate exposure. Maybe your camera doesn't have a waveform monitor, and so this is a very helpful feature for setting that. Now also we have our RGB parade. For some reason, I don't have it in color right now. I've got to figure out why, but we'll just click that. Also too, there's a vector scope, and then you can see here, there's just a different way to look at that as well. Now we also have focus peaking, so I'll just turn that off, the vector scope. And if you have any problems, just swipe down, you can click on that, and you can click on that again, and then click it again, and it'll disappear. So you can see here, we have purple set up. So if I click here, we can't make any adjustments, but if you see the little bars here, if I click there, you can see we can change the color of this. So let's say you're in a green environment and you normally have green as your color, you might wanna switch that to purple. So you can adjust the colors there. And again, you can see we have our waveform settings here. And you can look at just how that looks like, just the color to see if you're in focus without anything else. And so that's pretty handy. You can also make that more intense if you go to the right. If it's too distracting, you can go left and make those lines a little thinner. So we'll just go max on that right now. Now also you can see here, we can set our zebras and we can set our zebra threshold. We also have the ability to add LUTs to this. So if you're shooting in log format, you can add a LUT so you can see what it would really look like. And then you can also apply that during recording or during output, or you can compare half the screen will be flat, half the screen will have the LUT. So that's pretty cool that you can do that. Here we are on our monitor, you have your tally light, you can flip the screen, and then if I'm shooting in log, then I have the ability to see more. So let's do that. So I'm gonna come up here, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna click on here, and I'll just say that we're gonna shoot, you can see the different formats here, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna shoot Panasonic V-Log. So I'll just click here, and now when I go over, to the display and I go to the uh, monitor display, I click on monitor, you can see now I can choose Rec. 709, I can choose HLG, PQ, or I can enable a LUT. So that's if you're shooting in the proper format, then you'll have use and access to those controls. So let me just go over a few more things. So like I said, we have our zebras, you can see those on the screen right now, I'll turn that off. If we wanna go to this, it's false color. And you can see on the left from the bottom, that's a underexposure and the red is an overexposure. So you can see that this will also help you to set your proper exposure. And if we click here, it just goes to black and white. If I click there again, it's fine. I'm just gonna click here, get rid of that. Now here too, we have a one-to-one -one zoom in. You can see that and I can control that so I can move that around. Also, we click on that again, we're back to normal. We have a two times zoom as well. So you can see here the peaking's working, that uh, color checker is in focus, I'll click that. Now also you can see here, we have some guides on the screen, depending on how we wanna shoot. Click those a few times, they disappear. Then you can see here, we have different aspect ratios. We've got 16 by nine, we've got two, four, one, we've got two, three, five, and we've got one by nine, we've got one, eight, five, We've got four, three, and we should go back to normal right there. And then if I just slide this down a bit here, you can see this is for anamorphic D squeeze, and we have two times four, three, and then we've got another one there, and then we've got 1.5, 133, three, and then we're back to normal. So those are some of the key features that you have access to with the user interface. In this part of the video, I wanna address some of the things that no one's really talking about, and that's the additional expense for all of the accessories to get the most out of the Ninja 5. Now it's great at its price point as a monitor and recorder. It's a thousand nits, it has lots of features, but you're gonna have to get additional accessories to make it work. For example, it doesn't come with batteries, it doesn't come with an SSD, it doesn't come with an HDMI cable, and then you don't have a way to connect SSD to your computer. So I'll walk you through everything that you're gonna need. So let's get started too. I wanna to point out the support page. If you look here, you can click on support, and through here, you can check to see if there's a software update. When I bought mine, I had to update it. Here's the current version. It may be different with yours. Make sure you check that. It's relatively simple. You just download this, you load it onto the SSD, and then when you fire it up, it just sees it automatically. Simple way to update it. So make sure you check the support page. Now also, at the top of the page, there's a support link. This has a lot of documentation that can answer a lot of your questions. Before you contact support, go through all this, become familiar with all of the different features, and then you'll be more informed, and maybe you wouldn't even have to contact support for a question. Now let's talk about some of the different features. So one of the thing is, you can calibrate your monitor, which is an awesome thing, but 
you're going to need a couple of accessories to do that. So you can calibrate the screen. So not only for the color, but also for an accurate exposure, but you'll need an X-Rite i1 Display Pro. Now I already own this, so I didn't have to purchase this, but if you don't, you'll have to purchase this if you do want to calibrate your Ninja 5. And I recommend calibrating your computer monitor as well as your Ninja 5. Now you don't just need this, you need a special cable as well. There's a PDF document that you can download from that support page that I showed you. You'll need this cable here and you can get that at B&H. So like I'm saying, it adds up if you want to max out all the different features. So let me just show you what that looks like. Atomus USB to serial LANC cable 6.5. So I ordered this because I want to be able to calibrate it. And so that's just something you should be aware of. Now let's just go left to right. And we'll go through some of the things. Now they have a recommended drives on their page that they've tested. They have the 850 that's discontinued. So I purchased the 860. I went with the one tetrabyte version the Samsung one tetrabyte 860. That will stick out a little bit more. You might've noticed that in the video. So they also have a smaller one that's designed for the Ninja 5. And this is it here, the Angelbird Atom X. Again, you can access all of this information through their support page. So this is at their website. So make sure you check into that as well. Now, another thing, this was kind of confusing. I figured there'd be a USB cable that went from the Ninja 5 to my computer, but that's not the case. Not only do you have to buy an SSD drive to record your information, but then to get the information off of the SSD drive, you need their docking station. So I had to order this as well. So if you live in a smaller city, you may have to order this in advance so that when you actually get your Ninja that you can record with it, and then you can offload that data. You're going to need this. You'll find that all out in the documentation on the support pages. I want to walk you through some of these things. And again, there's that cable. If you want to do your calibration, there's the x right Now you'll also need an HDMI cable and there's different sizes depending on your camera. So on the Ninja 5, it's a full HDMI port. So you're going to need a full HDMI to whatever your camera has. So for example, the Panasonic GH5 has a full HDMI. The Sony a7 III has a micro HDMI. So make sure that you get that straight before you order a cable. Now these are relatively expensive, but they're guaranteed for 4K 60p. There's cheaper cables on the market. You'll have to test those out to see if they work for you. I know some people have reported the lower priced cables from Atomus do not work, the $29 cables. So really do your research before you purchase a cable. And then also too, one thing that you might want to consider is getting some small rig products. So for example, if you want to put a cage around your camera so you could mount the Ninja 5 on top of that, instead of putting the stress on your hot shoe mount, then you can get affordable cages from small rig. They make them for the GH5, Sony cameras. And then also, if you want to modify, say, a Ronin S, you'll need a plate like this so that you can attach it to your Ronin. You can see here, this is where you would attach the monitor and you can do a little bit of swiveling and things like that. So do your research, go through some of these products from small rig. If you decide you want to expand things out and create a cage system to attach your Ninja 2 as well as a gimbal. So check out all the different accessories that you might need. Now, as I wrap up this review, there's two things that I want to address that not too many people are talking about. Now, number one is the fan noise with the Atmos Ninja 5. You can hear an audible fan noise when you're recording. So if you have a mic very close to that, there's a good chance your mic will pick that up. So it's something to consider. Now I shoot my audio uh, externally to a zoom recorder. I'm about five or six feet away right now. So that's not an issue for me. Now two is the heat of this unit. So it's rather hot when you've had it running for a while. If you run this for an entire day, it could get quite hot. So those two are potential issues that you should be aware of. Now I've heard that Atmos is going to try address the fan noise and the heating issue with a future firmware update. Now, full disclosure, I purchased this unit with my own money. This is not a sponsored video. This is not a free review unit, and I am not affiliated with Atmos in any way. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, you can post them down below. If you already own this unit, let me know what you think of it. All right, thanks for watching this video once again, and I'll see you in the next one.